Explore a seed with a cherry grove village near a mountainside full of the pink cherry trees right at world spawn. Keep watching to learn more about this seed and other structures around the world. Also please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel as your support really means a lot. This village generated inside of a cherry grove biome and has an amazing view of all the cherry trees above the hill. The cherry grove biome is also very large which means you will have plenty of area to explore around it and collect some of the cherry logs to craft into cherry wood. Plus the cherry grove biome is also above a giant hill which gives a nice view of the village below when viewed from above, and the villagers also have a good view of the cherry trees which extend way above any of the village houses. There is also a dungeon on the surface with a zombie spawner which will allow you to convert zombie villagers to get the cheapest trades possible from them. The village itself is also very large with lots of villagers to trade with and collect items from. Plus there are loads of small animal pens which you can use to house some of the animals in the village. The cherry grove biome covers two sides of the village with the other two sides of the village open into a plains biome where there is plenty of space for building or maybe even to plant more cherry trees. The cherry grove biome is a really nice looking biome which makes this village the perfect place to live if you enjoy being surrounded by pink petals in the cherry trees. Gather resources from spawn to explore around the rest of the world. This seed spawns you in a giant cherry grove biome with the cherry village being not too far of a walk from world spawn. However, you might want to stick around spawn for a bit while you prepare for your journey to the cherry grove village. Unearth the trail ruins and discover ancient artifacts that have been hidden away in the suspicious gravel. A small part of the trail ruins is visible from above ground but the rest of the trail ruins is completely hidden underground which means you will need to carefully dig out the trail ruins in order to explore it first. You have to make sure not to accidentally break any of the suspicious gravel blocks since that is where all of the items are stored. There are many types of items you can get from the suspicious gravel in trail ruins but the most valuable items are pottery sherds and smithing templates since they have a unique variant that is only found in trail ruins. The trail ruins structure itself is made up of mostly bricks and terracotta which are all completely hidden by all of the dirt and stone blocks around them. Monsters spawn inside of the dungeon and guard the chests inside containing loot. This dungeon has a skeleton spawner in it which means you can get all the bones and arrows you need from here. Plus there are two chests which contain many useful items like string, seeds, gunpowder, horse armor, and even a golden apple. You should try and convert this dungeon into a skeleton XP farm so that you can more easily collect all of the bones and XP from the skeletons. There is also another dungeon not too far from this one which means they are both within spawning range of each other allowing you to create a double spawner mob farm in one area. Creating a double spawner mob farm here would be a very easy way to get lots of XP and mob drops since both the dungeons are so close together. Explore the lovely lush cave biome full of glowberries, axolotls, and moss blocks everywhere. This lush cave has a lot of separated parts in it but there is one giant area where there is lots of space to explore around it. This lush cave is also located at deep slate level which means all of the stone around the cave will be replaced with deep slate instead. Part of the lush cave has a low ceiling which allows the light from the glowberries to reach the ground and prevent mobs from spawning there. You will still need to light up the areas where there isn't any glowberries since that area will be dark allowing hostile mobs to spawn. Once you have lit up the entire lush cave it will be safe allowing you to live with the glowberries and axolotls surrounded by moss blocks and drip leaves. Watch out for falling pointed dripstone while exploring the dripstone cave and collecting copper. There is also a giant mineshaft in this dripstone cave which you can explore and collect some items from the minecart chests. Since this is a dripstone cave that means that copper will generate in larger amounts here which makes a dripstone cave the perfect place if you're looking for lots of copper. Plus the mineshaft in this dripstone cave gives you even more to explore along with all of the minecart chests and items that you will find in a mineshaft. This dripstone cave is also located at deep slate level which means you will have a higher chance of finding the more valuable ores down here. Be careful walking around a dripstone cave since there is lots of danger to look out for like lava or falling pointed dripstone. Try not to make too much noise or else you'll have to watch out for the warden in the ancient city. This ancient city is extra dangerous since it has a lot of dripstone and lava around it plus all of the skulk sensors and shriekers everywhere. But there are still many treasure rooms where you can get very valuable items such as enchanted golden apples and enchanted diamond armor. The items found in an ancient city are very rewarding but coming to an ancient city in the first place is very risky due to the high chance of you spawning a warden. The best way to prevent accidentally spawning a warden is to place wool blocks where you walk since wool blocks don't activate skulk sensors. You could also try sneaking but make sure to never stop sneaking or else the skulk sensors will be able to hear you moving around. Rebuild the ruined portal to enter the nether and explore a dimension full of fire. This ruined portal is located in a small cave at deep slate level and also has lava around it. 
there is also a chest in the ruined portal that has lots of golden carrots plus some enchanted golden tools and fire charges to light up the portal. You could also get the gold blocks around the ruined portal which you can use later to barter with piglins once you enter the nether. You can turn some of the lava around the portal into obsidian since you only need a few more blocks of obsidian to rebuild the portal. Once you are prepared with enough armor and tools and the portal has been fully rebuilt and activated, then you can finally travel through the portal and begin to carefully explore the nether dimension. Enter the nether dimension and build protection around the portal to return back home. Once you enter the portal you will spawn trapped in a small cave under a basalt delta's biome. You will have to carefully dig yourself out of the cave since lava can very easily flood into the cave when any block is broken. And once you make it out of the cave you will be greeted by all of the magma cubes and ghasts that spawn in the basalt delta's biome. There is also a giant lava ocean above the portal which means you should try to find a strider so that you would be able to safely travel across the lava. You have to be very careful when you are exploring around a basalt delta's biome since it can be very easy to accidentally fall in some lava or get attacked by a large group of magma cubes at any time. Watch out for the blazes and wither skeletons that walk the halls of the fiery nether fortress. This nether fortress is located in a soul sand valley biome which means that there will be a lot of ghasts spawning and trying to shoot fireballs at you all the time. Part of the nether fortress is also open which means you should build a cover around it to stop ghasts from attacking you. There is also a blaze spawner in the fortress which you can use to get all of the blaze rods that you will ever need. You should also watch out for the giant lava ocean that is below the fortress so you don't accidentally fall down there. Since a lot of the fortress is open, you will need to bring a lot of blocks to create a shelter that will be able to protect you from falling down into lava as well as protect you from all of the nether mobs attacks. Activate the end portal frames to enter the end dimension and battle the legendary ender dragon. There are no end portal frames active which means you will need to collect 12 eyes of ender to activate all 12 of the end portal frames to open the portal. You can try exploring around the stronghold since there is a chance to find chests with ender pearls in them which would help you gather enough ender pearls to craft all of the eyes of ender that are needed for the portal. Also make sure to watch out for the silverfish spawner since they will keep spawning and then hide inside of the stone bricks around the end portal room and might start to attack if you were to break any of the infested stone bricks. You should just break the spawner as soon as you enter the end portal room so that it doesn't cause any problems later while you explore the stronghold. Collect enchanted books from the stronghold library room to enchant your tools and armor. The chests have some useful books like sharpness, efficiency, loyalty, power, mending, and impaling, as well as some smithing templates which you can use to add a unique design to your armor. Plus there are tons of other books around the library room which you can use to create your own max level enchanting table setup. Having your own max level enchanting setup would be very useful so that you can enchant books to get the exact enchantment you want and all at the highest level possible. With all of the best enchantments you will be able to create the strongest armor and tools to use in battle against the ender dragon. 